then I guess we move into the chapter discussion. And I'll get started. So the question I have for all of you is, what do you see as your biggest challenge running a chapter? And then we can get the dialogue going. So who wants to answer that question? Finding speakers. Did you say finding or funding? Finding. Because I thought that was the easiest part. I mean, that to me takes an hour. It depends yeah. on who you know to start out with. Yeah. Well, I don't know anybody. I just go on the MWA Facebook page, see whose posts look interesting, and shoot them a message. Oh. And oh, I get okay. a little back from There we go. Let's get our uh, next speaker. Okay. Yeah, so but it works really well. People respond right away, and, uh, you know, it's like 20 minutes worth of work, and I've got a speaker, and they're pretty, you know, they're just pretty good, because you can judge by what they're posting whether or not they're just self-promoting or they know what they're talking about. And do they uh, bring in a lot of people to your chapter? No. Nothing brings in a lot of people to my chapter. So that's another challenge for you. My challenge, yes, is getting people to show up. I think yeah, that's, that's our that's county's chapter, yeah. too. Although, last two meetings, yes, yeah. you have a crowd. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wonder, um, I, I was try, thinking, like, uh, what brought in so many people. Um, is it the way we spread the word, or is it was it the, the topic and speaker more, I, which, I more than the other? I think it's the topic and the speaker, and the speaker saying, telling all their friends, and then mm -hmm. telling all their friends, and then telling all their friends. Mm -hmm. And posting on on the various sites as well. Mm -hmm. People forget too. If yeah. you put it up once, by the time it rolls around to the time of the meeting, it's like, oh, there's a meeting. I already made plans. Our, our worst one was um, October. Well, I was going to say the the topic was uh, pr promoting your book through social media. I I, I think um, I mean we. I did uh, a number of things wrong, especially, but um, I think what, uh, another problem might have been that it might have been a little too narrow because somebody who hasn't started their book or has just started their book might think they're light years away from even thinking about promoting it, and uh, somebody who's already promoting it, you know, already knows what to do. So I, I think that might have been uh, one problem with that. We, we did the best with a, uh, a children's writer oh, yeah. who, um, I mean, she, pre I guess, presented on, you know, all aspects of her experience, which would appeal to more people, I guess. And saying, well, actually, um, and Barbara Morrison, she, uh, with, with her, we got to uh, offer a service for free, <laughs> a, a workshop is how we presented it and, and how she conducted it. And uh, both of those had us uh, stretching, stretching capacity of, uh, of you know the venue. Space, yeah. Yeah. When I was president, mm -hmm. the other one, the speaker that I had that brought in a big draw was the copyright attorney. Mm -hmm. He, um, there was about fifteen people for that mm -hmm. meeting too. Mm -hmm. Was that's an evergreen topic. Baltimore, when it does copyright, legal terms, contracts, that's usually a big draw. Yeah. Glenn, do you think that um, we, we should compare notes on the chapters, compare notes on how you get the word out and come up with uh, good ideas from each chapter on how you publicize these meetings and how you know you can draw on people, especially people who aren't, aren't members from the community? Definitely. Um, I'm not sure, not sure the best mechanics of how to do this. I'm I mean, just wondering how everybody's doing it. Well, right. well we're doing it on the uh, the MWA site, right. the, the the Howard County yeah, website, groups, Young yeah. Groups it's thing, a, um, and Facebook. Uh -huh. um, how about yeah. outside uh, to um, not yet newspapers? Mm -hmm. We're also trying well, to email people who come to the meetings in the past. Mm -hmm. I've, um, get them back. I've done some with uh, Patch, but I don't know that that's brought anybody in yet. Um, and also uh, Meetup. Anybody familiar with Meetup? Yeah. Meetup. 
that got us one person. Yeah, that, that brought us one person. Yeah. So you far, said, we did that. Yeah. 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 So then they start yeah. charging money, yeah. so we just close two colleges. Yeah, I've never gotten any response at all from them. I don't have a I don't do I don't have a. I, I, I haven't tried Twitter. I, I don't have that many followers myself. But, um, but you can tweet. You can. There's a way. Well, I use something called Hootsuite. You know what Hootsuite yeah. is? Yeah. I've heard of it. I don't really know. It, it, it connects all the social media. Right. You can send out to Facebook, LinkedIn, all from one site. And yeah, I pay like five bucks a month. Yeah. And basically, what, you, what, what I use it on, I'll tell you another spot to go, which I, I believe is the best site uh, is uh, LinkedIn mm -hmm. and uh, LinkedIn is really powerful and um, but I could if I wanted to I've done it well but 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 I could send out a 140 character tweet using Hootsuite and it will send it to 20 different um, social <coughs> media connections I would say connections because for example on LinkedIn I have 10 or 15 connections this the, uh, it, the the emergency managers group that gets a the leadership development group within LinkedIn. So in other words, you can put twenty, and then you just send one one hundred forty character it's message like, out, and it goes right to all those twenty, just like that. Do you it, think we do could have a uh, Do you think we could pass that sign up sheet around again and put our Twitter handles on there, and we could all re retweet what you're doing? Okay. Here it is. Oh, no. It's just because I did her. That was actually, that was your sheet, right? That's yeah, that's the yeah, sheet. That's quite good around yeah. the room yet. Yeah. If we yeah. like, there's also a sign up sheet out front, which yeah. is the one you should I put have two in. Yeah. One for me and one for my job. Well. What's that? Two I have, have two Twitter uh, accounts. Yeah, one you don't for need my job yeah. and one for you me. You can send, oh. you can use Hootsuite and send it to both accounts. Well, I don't want to do that. I send my different followers. But for example, I I have. In an international emergency so, managers association, right? If I write something on leadership, yeah. what I normally do, like I'll put it, this this is one way to do it. This is what I found. Let's say you put an article, somebody puts a poem up. Right? Let's say somebody puts a poem up, and it's on a particular page on the website. Then you 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 take the link, you get an earl, you know, it's an owl link, so it shortens it. And then you tweet, you use Hootsuite and tweet that link out, and then it goes to. It goes out, and then all people have to do is click on the link, and they can go back right to the MWA site and read the poem. And that, that's what I was doing. I haven't done it in a while, but I've written several leadership articles, but they were on my website. And then I, I put the link to that article, and to, actually to the PDF, so it could take you right to the PDF. And then you just tweet it out, and people would click on it, and go right to the PDF, and download the PDF, and it would be right there for them. Just one, All they had to do was one click. And, and I would do that with 20 different organizational entities, most of which were on LinkedIn. If we, if we pick a speaker soon enough for David to get it out, he, he puts it out into, what, what are the uh, It's a uh, WordPress. Word, well, WordPress and then there's a list, an email list, I just shoot it out to uh, the Capitol, there's some radio stations, gotcha. um, right. you know. There's also uh, a Facebook group called Baltimore Area sure Poets and Writers, and when yeah. I was president, I always sent to them. And they're not I mean, just Maryland writers, writers. Right. Would you like everybody. So well, one of the things I would recommend is get on LinkedIn uh, and, and look at all the writers association. Okay. I've never. I'm on LinkedIn because okay. okay. someone sent me. LinkedIn yeah, is incredibly powerful. Really I, I, I don't know what LinkedIn has been doing lately, but I've been getting like. Boatloads of endorsements from okay. people who are on my list. Leadership development, facilitator, all this kind of stuff. You're now officially endorsed by this guy. I haven't asked them to do anything. They're just endorsing, you know. Yeah. Now, I guess i got to get on there and re-endorse. But, but I haven't done that in a while. Yeah, I haven't done that in a while. No pressure, right? <laughs> and, uh, but LinkedIn, because LinkedIn brings all these business organizations and not-for-profits together, I mean, if you, if you took 20 writers associations different ones and tweeted everything out to them. You never know what you pick up from or who you pick up from from different organizations. Sure. LinkedIn is very powerful. I would highly recommend you look at that. And I that's think, really yeah. business organizational entity specific. I look at the best. 
Yeah. And it would be good for MWA to have a professional presence on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's own. I mean, you, organizations can have their own pages, right? Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Right. I, I think, think there's a rudimentary page up there for MWA now, but we certainly could. Does it take yeah. much to? It doesn't take much to put, you know, like a, a bio, a meetings. Exactly. I mean, actually, what might be an interesting way to go because it's simpler, faster, and it doesn't cost anything is instead of really worrying the website too much. Worry the LinkedIn connection, and then hoot on the LinkedIn connection, and let that stuff. Now the thing is, you really do want to have a decent website. Yes. Because when the link, when they click on the website, they got they got to come to uh, you know they'll come through LinkedIn to the website. And they right. said never mind. Yeah. <laughs> MWA, MWA doesn't have a Twitter handle yet. Actually, we do. Just no one's running it. Oh. And I honestly don't even know who has the password anymore at this point. It's just one of those things that hasn't been handed down. Wow. Well, the other thing, the other thing too is there's, the other thing too is there's, there's tremendous cross connection between Twitter and LinkedIn. So if you put something on Twitter, it goes on LinkedIn. Put on LinkedIn, goes on Twitter. But LinkedIn is kind of like a, a rudimentary Hootsuite approach. It's a rudimentary, but Hootsuite is pretty fabulous as long as you keep it to 140 characters. But you can you can hoot bigger things, but it gets cut off right. And I think we should also remember in, in publicity um, to include traditional media as well, radio, TV, and, and newspaper outlets in the area. Um, Edna in, in Charles County heard about the, the St. Mary's chapter that was forming through an article that appeared in the paper. And that inspired her and um, Michelle to consider, they had been toying with the idea of creating uh, a writer's organization, and this gave them. The, was that the first you had heard of MWA? Yes, what? yes, I couldn't believe I'd never heard of it. Was that in the Maryland Independent yeah. Enterprise? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it works. I think Old media is so good. Yeah. Old media is good. The the trick with the trick with old media is that you're going to need to find out who to talk to, who what desk covers your oh, stuff, get to know them, and find out their phone number. That sort of thing. It, it, sending sending a press release just to a general mailbox or a general mailing address is not going to work. You got to. There's a lot of research involved. Twitter, Twitter. Find out you who, who to send the it. And that's all. I'm sorry. The calendar editor. You always should send the press yes. release because that is their whole job is to list events. That's true. And you also want to find out who's covering the arts beat because arts. if you have a particular yes. good speaker, you they're going to want to interview that person. Or talk to you. Uh, speaking of good speakers, I recommend the uh, Ellen Prester. If anybody's looking for somebody, Ellen Prester. She, she, she was very good. L. M. Preston, Lenita. She, oh, she's, she's in our area. She lives in our area. Okay, but she's very good. She, she talk about world building and how she goes about it, and that's something that no matter what you write, you can apply. That's <laughs> She, um, she spoke at Howard County last year on self-publishing. Mm -hmm. Right. She was really good. Right. She was good. Um, for you chapters that may not know, I do. That's one of my uh, jobs is to keep a speaker list of all the chapters. And in fact, I'm supposed to be getting reports from each of the chapters um, after they've had their meeting so that I can keep up the speaker list. So anytime that you're looking for a speaker, just ask me and I'll send you the list. Uh, and I do keep it as up to date as possible, although I have, haven't been, the last two months I haven't really updated it, but uh, it is, I do have it. And it is on uh, the Yahoo board group, but if you, but I also have it on my computer so I can just email it to you if you, on it um, if you're having trouble getting a speaker. And these are for these are speakers that aren't just from, that spoke at chapters, they're also speakers that spoke at the conferences. So it's a pretty long list. And that's that, that's the kind of thing that I, I need for my project, you know, to make it accessible to all the chapter presidents. Exactly. exactly. Well as I said, it is in the files on the board I, I, the, but I also have it. Yeah, um yeah that's but I did, this is actually a really useful segue because of all the chapter, all the chapter officers here, how many people knew that 
you had that expectation, that, that was expected of you. Raise your hand. What was expected? Yeah, what was that you send in your speakers. I haven't done it, but I knew it was expected. <laughs> <laughs> you should probably dump it on your secretary. I, I probably yeah. She's a little busy. <laughs> yeah, she, I've heard she's a good, yeah, somebody keeps working her really hard. I try not to overload her too much. One, one, the reason I asked that, I thought it was a pretty good segue. One of the things that, that I, and I hope that the, the project that Glenn works on, uh, and the one, the, the consultant that I'm talking to, is that a, a lot of the things that, there, you, there, there may be things that chapters need to do that you guys just don't know about. That because no one's told you, or that, or that you used to know, but you forgot, or no one bothered, no one reminded you, or you used to report to this person, but then they left and the new person didn't ask you. Uh, so one of the things that, and we don't have to cover that at this meeting, but either at the next meeting or on the board list, I'd like you all to think about things that you have been unreason that you've been asked to do that you didn't know you had to do, or things that you wonder if you should be doing, and let's get that discussion going. Like I said, not necessarily here because that could go on forever, but especially on the board list um, because that will help us start defining the world of what you know and what you don't know and what you need to know. So that's just a little segue and back to the I have a follow-up question related to the speakers um, wearing my treasury hat right now, which I think may also double as an invisibility cloak based on what happens for treasures. <laughs> <laughs> You're like the drummers in Spinal Tap. Yeah. <laughs> Except I haven't done it yet. No. Um, anyway, are we having trouble getting good quality speakers, and is that related to the amount of money you have to offer them? Are we running into any of that since treasury is my... Actually, actually, when we started offering, um, well... Seems it seems to have uh, smoothed the process a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right, there's some consistency now. Yeah. 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 Since you're offering that. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. It makes it easier to uh, people in. And, and it makes it easier to present the idea of speaking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like here's what, yeah. one of the yeah. things that's in it for you. Yeah. yeah. My first yeah. two, I didn't have any money yet to pay them, so I was like feeling like I was. Begging, humbly begging somebody to please show up, and now I'm just like, you want to do it, it pays it. And it's, it's a fair point that um, most of the, much of the time there is uh, something, even if they weren't getting money, there might be something in it to them, like mm -hmm. selling their books. Mm -hmm. no, sure. But but that might um, unnecessarily limit the type of speaker you might want to bring in. Maybe you want to bring in a speaker that doesn't have anything to gain. It you know, doesn't have a book to promote or something like that. So, so I think even offering, if they don't have a book to promote, they often have a business to promote. So often, so but, but which is which brings which brings its own perils because then you have somebody who wants to sell your members something, and they, they might not be the most the best most objective source of information. Then. Yeah. But I mean, not that not that, that should rule out somebody who has that agenda, but. Um, you shouldn't, I, I think it's great not to have to be limited to that agenda. Yeah, I had a question kind of related to that. The, uh, I guess I was told when I took over program chairman that there was $75 per meeting available for a speaker, but we didn't have enough money but for X percent of the meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wasn't really sure how to decide whether to offer it or not. So I basically haven't offered it unless it came up where I felt like I had to. That's really good to know for us. We really want people, we, I'm speaking for the board, I hope consistently, want to be able to pay all of our speakers. So we get people from our groups that are getting professional work on their resume, but also so we attract the quality of speakers that help our membership. Um, so if you, any of you find your stipend allotment isn't working for you, let us know. We recently had one chapter president request additional money from the board, so she wrote up a request mm -hmm. and sent it out to the board list. So how do I know how much I got in the bank? Um, we, that's a good question. We used to have a log, a log on for every chapter from what I understand. When I started that wasn't in existence anymore. Actually, I think everyone got paper statements and stuff. Yeah. I don't know what happened there. It was before my time. I think the board, I think the bank itself stopped issuing them. A lot of people oh. did that. They went to, if you didn't yeah. tell them you wanted paper, they just sent them electronically or something. Ours are available for download on the website, so I can certainly get statements for you. The other option we have is to pay something around $40 a month for all the chapters to have access, though we do have some chapters, there's at least two 
to have online access. So um, we're we're one of them. I mean, I I actually uh, tried logging on the other day though. Oh, I left us out. Oh, you did. Did you get locked out too? No, I didn't. Okay. I didn't get locked out. I left out. myself out. I have to fix that. Well, I. I, I didn't get locked out. I got prompted to set security questions, um, all of which assumed that only one person was going to want to get into this site, like you know, high school mascot, that sort of thing. Right. So I, I didn't. So I didn't get it going further than that because I didn't want to lock Janet out. In, in, um, but sorry. I already created those security questions. But it, so. it prompted and me. Anyway. They did. They asked yeah, us for them they, too. recently because I just was on the Thanks site and didn't doing ask me to. Um, as an extra security measure, it's like every three months you have to go through it with a new password and yeah. new security questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. Yeah. This is a, it's a, a kind of a pet peeve of mine, even, even as a, a married man. Every account assumes that, only, that, that you don't have a second person that wants to get into it. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes. what, does, does, you know, do I have to memorize, you know, uh, Every little fact about my wife. Yeah, my husband yeah. lost me out of my account yeah. all the time. He can never remember my security. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> true. And then you keep thinking of new ones, well, you so you can't. Okay, well that's going to be asked, so I better know that. But but then they ask, uh, okay. you know, what was the make of your second car? <laughs> so does everybody get a deposit? I mean, I like the last deposit I know of was in December of 2010. That's the last time MWA put money in our account that I know of. I mean, for all I know, you guys have been doing that, you know. All but, of the accounts but I have the balances right now. I don't know off the top of my head. Um, I didn't, I don't think that I put any in anyone's account when I first started in August because everyone had around $600, except I think you guys. And yeah, since you were so low, I put it right, in. Right, because we, so we were under the impression that you use it or lose it. Which is not true. No, it's totally <laughs> yeah. We dispel that myth. With a yeah. through its heart. I walked in as a new treasurer and said, "What is this chapter doing? There's yeah, books in our hotel." It's a little confusing. <laughs> so what I can do, and that's the thing: if you have that question anytime, email me and I'll find it. Unfortunately, I'm doing eight million things right now, and I got all of your chapter treasurer reports by January, I think, and I still haven't combed over those yet. I have them. I'm glad I have them, but. Um, I'm just a concern because if we haven't had any money put in since then, my next check will bounce. Is your check a big one? No, it's like it's $75 for the April speaker, yeah, but it will bounce on us if there was nothing further put in. Um, so should I shoot you an email or something? And maybe we should thank as chapter leaders, because I don't think the state board really is against it, but about paying the $40 for the login for all the accounts that people can log Is that $40 in, so. per account? Or? No, it's for the whole... We have. I can't see the board opposing that because that, as we add chapters, that's going to already be right instituted. Oh yeah. The other option that's is worth to proposing. email me for statements, which is fine. That's a really easy thing to do when I don't lock myself out of the account. <laughs> and so anything to do with those security here, questions. Forty dollars a month. Forty dollars a month, and then everybody gets a login. Right. right. Well, I don't think that they know that some people have them. Yeah, that I had a conversation with them, and I didn't see, like, they knew that anyone was getting in. So. Mm -hmm. well, that's useful. Are the treasurer reports itemized down to the smallest receipt? I mean, it's got, it's exhaustive? Well, the, right, the, the reports that, that, that go to the board, yeah. Right. I mean, I'm, just, I'm just thinking that that um, uh, obviously should be... Um, we, on, on the list, uh, people were talking about um, the board knowing about expenses and that sort of thing. And, and, uh, well, they're groups. It's not by item. It's, it's a group. So, like, well, that's, that's, the speaker fee for oh, okay. the quarter. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah I'm, just, I'm just thinking that um, maybe they're... How do I put this? I wonder if does this if the state board know um, you're, you're, you're talking about on the I think you Paul were talking about the, how the board needs to know um, how money is spent and all that. Uh, I'm just wondering what's the best way to. I think to buy the, the the twice yearly treasury reports. Uh, are a terrific place to do it, and mm -hmm. probably as often as we need them now. 
I think there's a template, right, for what... We have two. I made one and there's one in the folder. I'm still feeling them out. Okay. Yeah. But it's that's a great opportunity for us to capture that. And if we're not capturing it, we'll just add a, another line item to the report to capture that. It's, it's very useful. Uh, it, it's the sort of thing that I think our bookkeeper would find very valuable, too, in tracking uh, what she'll be tracking. So we don't need the, the need for it will we'll only get bigger. So it's detailed enough for, for you on your end to see um, like what things cost. What things cost, basically what, what you're spending money on and how much it costs. And by extension, I think we'd also like to know what you're not spending money on and why. Because if you need more money, we, can, we need to know that so that we can allocate you the money either after the fact or in advance. I mean, it, and also, as a treasurer, it helps us keep an eye and make sure no one's taking money out of the account that shouldn't be. Exactly. That's how, yeah, right. And these are quarterly? I only require them every six months because it's not a lot of business any of the chapters do. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to submit them more frequently, you're welcome to. Well, <laughs> just Most people don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> to make sure six I heard correctly, I, sh I should be <laughs> offering that. Uh, Honorarium to every speaker and $75 is the number? The chapter budgets were designed around the idea that every chapter would have $75 for 10 speakers. The idea being that many chapters take a couple months off for holidays. So that was the basis for the number. That was many, many years ago when there was only the Baltimore chapter. And we thought we'd give it a shot and see how it worked. And as far as I know, it's never changed. So We're up to 12 15. Okay. Yeah. What's the assumption? They added Sorry. it because a lot of people were paying a lot for rent, so they upped it to yes. the twelve fifty. That's what I was going to say. What's the assumption for venue? You spent money spent on venue. There's a large variety from our free chapters to get it to exactly. free. I think Montgomery County maybe the most expensive. Yeah, we uh, twelve fifty doesn't remotely come close to covering our costs if we're going to pay our speakers, which is why we just requested more money from the board, and I guess that'll come up. Friday's board conference call. Mm -hmm. um, we pay sixty dollars um, a month, and we may be even needing to, if if I can't bargain that down. Um, we're currently meeting at Montgomery College in Rockville, and if we want to be in the room twenty or thirty minutes ahead of time to set up, they need us to put that in the contract at thirty dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. So it could even be going up. But at the moment, we've been paying either fifty or sixty. Um, we paid fifty dollars a month at a nice place that didn't charge us for setup and cleanup, but they got too busy and kicked us out very nicely. So we pay a minimum at the moment of 60 and we've looked, Carolee looked around, we couldn't find anything cheaper. Even we, local bookstores charge for meeting space in sure. Montgomery County. Oh yeah, Montgomery County. Is and um, um, the libraries yeah. charged about the same amount of money and they weren't open early enough or late enough um, and they weren't, they couldn't necessarily guarantee the same time every month kind of thing. So we haven't come up with a better solution for rooms. Um, we'd really like to pay all our speakers. It's just even for some of them just gas money practically. If they come from, you know, Bowie or Virginia or someplace. Um, and there's non-tangibles that we offer them. Um, I write everybody, um, I'm, my goal is to write everybody a testimonial letter if we really, if we liked them, thanking them with a, some blurb that they can use in their business. And um, I include the speakers on special events, like Austin Camacho came over and spoke to us from Bowie, so when we are doing a book selling event, I will shoot an email to the authors that have driven a ways to speak to us and ask them if they want to be included, even though they're not technically in Montgomery County. And I'm thinking of ways to include them on our website for extra kind of visibility. So there's those intangibles, but I think it's really important to be able to offer a fee. Um, and we're also really actively stepping into community events um, where we need to um, rent tables. Now, I gather that state is willing to pay for the tables, but there's auxiliary costs like, you know, table skirting and um, copies of the brochures or flyers and just stuff because we really want to be visible in the community. Sure. We have a That's website. Um, so it's not, you know, th there's other expenses, but if you do the math at... Um, and we're doing 11 meetings this year at $60 um, uh, for the uh, plus the 75 for the speakers. It comes out, you know, with, and we buy a book every month for the person from the person that presents and give it away to the uh, someone in the assembled group. So it just comes out to more money than that. 
Absolutely. And uh, the board certainly wants, uh, my, the board is open to considering requests like that and we vote on it and typically we approve that sort of thing and if we have the money for it and if, and if it's a good, if it's a good case. So. And how soon your treasurer has been looking for meeting space too? Well, yeah, that's true. When you can vouch for it. <laughs> you know, I think that definitely, um, you know, we would like to be fiscally responsible and we, we're not spending money frivolously and we would certainly love to get a better deal on the rentals. And we certainly, I think, might do paid events or sponsorships or something in the future. But we're six, seven, eight months old, and we're just doing the basics right now. We can't be raising money, <laughs> not this year anyway. Exactly. That, 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 that is why we are doing the sponsorship thing. Let, let, the, let the state take that burden off you. And another burden that I think the state can take off the chapters, and we're talking about, we're talking, we're touching on this in a couple ways, is I would love to see us have what amounts to an event kit where we can provide chapters that that are going to be speaking, that are going to have a table at an event. Here's everything you need. Here's brochures, here's sign-up sheets, here's handouts, here's, here's our banner, here's our signage. Come get it, come print it out if you need extra copies, and go take it, and when you're done with it, you know, hand it out to the next. Um, it, the state can direct, can, can, we can take care of registering for the event, we can take care of paying for the table, paying for the space. You guys just have to find the volunteers to staff it, we give you the kit, go out and do it. I, I, we're, we've had variations on that over the years and I'd like to see us get back to doing that. But that's, that's one thing that the board can do to take that burden off the chapters. And we'd really like, I was going to um, ask you, uh, I think it would be great to get a banner. We um, have a banner, believe it or not. We actually have a banner? A state banner. Because we have, I have but the little stand-up thing that, that you gave me after the conference to use. Mm -hmm. um, but we've done, we've got three of these events on the calendar this year, and I'd like to do ten a year. Mm -hmm. So you may have to get a kit just for Montgomery County. And that would be awesome. I would, what if we got to the point where we actually could do that? Every chapter, as a, as a startup, when a new chapter gets created, here's the complete set of all the things you get. You know, your startup kit. Everything from how to start a chapter to everything you need to set up an event. I'd love to get it to that point. And we're actually, we got the ingredients for it. But, I, yeah, right now we've got the one banner. And frankly, I don't even know where it is. Do you know? Mm -hmm. Is it in your garage? Uh, I have the sign that's about this big. Okay. We, we, have a, we have a big... But I know, a, you're talking about the banner that they use at the Baltimore Book Festival. I think that's where it is, in the Baltimore chapter. Well, the Baltimore chapter has the Baltimore they chapter the banner. Bat, they have both, though. I they have both of them. Okay. Yeah. All right. How greedy. <laughs> <laughs> and Howard County, last, I had a sign created for Howard County that we they can use. One. And they have a new one. Cool. Um, that they use for events also. So... Yeah. And that's another thing that chapters can do, and we encourage them. The Baltimore chapter's first request was, can we go out and make some signage? Can, we, can I pay someone to do a banner for us? Oh, sure, go for it. So if you guys want to have signage made to your own spec, I think that's, that's something you can always approach the board for. And we also, you know, frankly, I'd love it if all the chapters had logos. Little, little, uh, that's just me personally, but I think it's a branding thing and an identity thing that... Howard County has a cool logo, Baltimore has one, Annapolis has a really cool one. Montgomery's working on it. We yes. just we just finally got like our goal statement about um, our, our last board meeting. Okay. And so um, it's on it's on the logo and the motto are on the back burner. Okay. They'll get we'll get there. I have a question about logos. Do the do the logos include the uh, state logo? The chapter logos include the uh, recognition of the state logo. I don't yeah, think you need to do it right now. It's on the mug. Do oh, we it's think? on the mug, yeah. Is that important? Yeah, I think that so. what we were planning on doing is having both. <laughs> having the yeah. state logo yeah. a little That's smaller and the Montgomery sure. County logo yeah. a little bigger. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And having them both on our That's location. how we worked around it, in the honest. I, I'm just thinking about at the University of Maryland, Baltimore, where I work, we have, we have a huge identity problem, uh, which is not what we're talking about here. But um, one of the things we did was to make consistent logos for everything, mm -hmm. we have mm -hmm. uh, the uh, this is the the logo mm -hmm. right here. It's the three pillars of Gavage Hall that started the University of Maryland in 1807, and it, this is then uh, in the logo of, of everything. And for the schools, for example, the six schools has the logo University of Maryland School of Pharmacy. Now I'm not saying we should do that, but I think the if the chapters have a consistent 
uh, identification of, of the um, state logo, it might help uh, generate some members too. Sure. Certainly would help de eliminate confusion about identity. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just for a little clarification, since we were talking about requesting funds for signage, um, when you make that request to the board, we just need to know specifically what it is you're getting and how much it's going to cost. That's the adequate request for us, is the amount of money you're looking for. Thanks a lot, easier to decide. Yeah. The more info you can provide us, the more likely we are to vote in your favor. Yes, because if you send us something and say you need money for a sign, is that okay? I'm going to reply and tell you to get me the specifics. So um, would, would state then pay for, for example, for the, um, the brochures or flyers that we print and take around? Absolutely, mm -hmm. yes. Sure. Yeah, we did that actually for uh, St. Mary's uh, for their organizational meeting. She, we, I sent her the PDFs. She had them printed up. She sent the receipt to her. Because that stuff well, adds she probably, up. She printed it on, uh, oh gosh, if Nancy's listening, sorry. But the, I, they, must have, they must have a paper shortage down there. I'm not sure. But, <laughs> but we gladly gave it. Our secretary at least tries to send out an email for each meeting to our, the Annapolis chapter members. Um, I don't know if it's been worked out how you even know what you would consider to be the Annapolis chapter members. Because um, you, you join the, the Maryland you join Association. The exactly. um, I don't know if there's some way to get yeah, emails of, thing, you know, of like, uh, people that are in the Annapolis area or, or want email? to participate in the Annapolis chapter. Do you have an email list for your chapter? She has some sort of a list. Uh, I, don't, I really don't know how she maintains it. Yeah, see, I've got a list I just half-assedly put together, but I've always wondered what <coughs> if I could, I mean, could I say to you guys, can you give me all members in these zip codes? Sure, absolutely. Oh, you can? I wish the members, I wish Brian were here, but yeah, absolutely, we, we have a master mem member spreadsheet, and he can do exactly that. And by to city, have Star by Chapter again, that makes it, Star Chapter makes it really easy. You can go in and just enter people who attended your meeting with their email address and affiliate them with your chapter, and then... In there. That's yeah. true, you'd be able to do it yourself. Right, because I mean, that's Very another concern of mine is what the hell am I going to do when I leave in June? Mine? And on my personal email, I have all these. How do I. You can forward the list to the next person. Yeah. Sure. What I want to know Different ways is to export it. how can we spread around all these lists? Because when I was president, I used to send to the Howard County list and the Baltimore list. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have an Annapolis list or Carroll County list, and of course Montgomery wasn't around. There's yet. no uniformity about how chapters do it. Some, some but chapters it would have be their own helpful lists. if we did have, I mean, I also did the state list as well, but mm -hmm. it would be helpful if all the other chapters had everybody else's lists, because then we could be publicizing it uh, we to have, each other. Right. Mm -hmm. We had a speaker one time come from Cal Carroll County, and it would have been nice to have sent the email to the Carroll County list. But um, maybe through the presidents, if we, if the presidents of each chapter are on everybody, each chapter's email list, then at least the presidents would get it floating through their mailbox, and then we could forward it out to the to the to members, yeah. And am I right that anyone can join the um, MWA announcements list? They don't have to be a member. Right, they don't have so to be a member. So we can plug that That's too correct. because every meeting is supposed to be announced to that announcements list. So yes. anyone who's registered should get it, which is a big, easy list. Right. Another way that we publicize is that when we hear about an event, we will broadcast it via the statewide announcements list and we put it on the blog, the state blog, keyboard in hand. So we help spread it to our, our list as well. So consider the state list as just one more list. But I know having worked at the Baltimore Book Festival, a lot of people just sign up the Baltimore list, yes. and they don't sign up at the Maryland list. Sure, and that's their choice. I mean, they're, they're allowed to do that. Right. So I'm saying there's probably people that signed up just in the Howard County Yahoo groups or just in the Carroll County list. Um, who probably don't want to know. Who aren't on the announcement Exactly, list. right. So I mean, it's, a, it's a huge sloppy Venn diagram. And the more of those circles we can hit, the better. Well, one thing um, I sort of worry about a little bit, because I, I worry about everything. <laughs> um, I had noticed one. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, we've had, uh, in my short tenure, we've had uh, terrible turnout, and we've had full house, full houses, and um, different new ideas. It, you know, um, 
keep coming coming to me about uh, ways to publicize our meetings, and you know a bunch of them happened here, um, and, and it like occurs to me like what if I had uh, done a couple more things for those full houses. What if I had done a couple more things and and uh, seventy five people showed up for a room that seats fifteen? <laughs> You know, we we have our, we have, we're very uh, fortunate that Louise found that room, but it's about half the size of this room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, if, if we had, had had twice as many people show up, I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah, I don't. It's a kind of an awkward thing. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's kind of my favorite problem. <laughs> it's it's a, it's a great problem, but it is a problem. Yes. It, it's a it's a sign that you're the kind of chapter president we that MWA needs more of. That even when you're doing well, you're worried that you could have done better. So thank you. <laughs> well, my, my main my main stra strategy is I flounder and threaten, threaten to destroy the chapter, which which forces Amy and Janet to to uh, come rushing Chat in and rescue me. And, and you're also it turns out really well. You're such a terrible you're, you're such a typical villain though. You do all this exposition about what your plan is in front of the guy who then gets away. Yes. That's true. Maybe I shouldn't have said it out loud. You shouldn't have said it out loud. It's another county, though. It's either feast or famine. They either have zero, yeah. very few people, yeah. or they have very a lot of people. It's, and yeah. even when I was president, it was that way. It was feast or famine. Yeah. yeah. That's so, and that's really, it's not just Howard County. I mean, Baltimore has had meetings where there are six people show up. And then we pack them out the door the following month. I mean, it... You never, there, it's, there's alchemy involved. I mean, you pick a speaker that you think is going to be really good, but everybody's out of town that weekend. I mean, there's so many variables that it, it, you can probably pick up on some broad themes, but don't, oh, don't overanalyze your successes and your failures to rep, try to replicate them exactly because you'll, you'll never. I guess to, to bring up the practical question behind that great problem to have, um, it, it sometimes makes me wonder. If uh, uh, I mean we're, we're, we've got the, that uh, wonderful deal with the, uh, uh, a free, reliable, tiny room, is that is that the right trade trade off to make or or not? I, I don't know. It's not. It's 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 great most of the time, but. Should I consider that that um, hypothetical where seventy five people show up, or should I just like try to for just uh, assume that we'll never get anybody getting any more than fifteen people? What's the size of the room? I mean, this, the room is about fifteen twenty. It's about people. about would you would you say half the size of this There's room? There's only about fifteen chairs in that room, okay. and they're yeah. big chairs with tables. Do you However, consistently pack them in? I no, mean, you, no, twice no. in a row though. That's that's the what. La that's the although thing. last yeah. time they were actually using yeah. that little room and we were in their lobby, which was bigger. This is mm -hmm. nicer. If only the yeah. chairs were smaller. Mm -hmm. That you know, it, it's a senior home, so the chairs are about this there some, wide. Uh, there were some distractions. People yeah. talking. Yeah, until they went to sleep. Yeah, they, they, they very early. Let me ask you this. I was involved in the organization meeting, and there was 40 people at the organization mm -hmm. meeting, and that was the only time Howard County has ever had 40 people. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I don't think you're ever going to get 75. Yeah. But. <laughs> I, let, me, let me ask just a quick question. Do, do you think psychologically that you are choosing speakers that suit a venue of that size? I mean, do you, is that room subconsciously... Okay, that, that's good then. All right. The, the other thing, I would just mention this, um, a non-scientific approach. Trust your instinct. Mm -hmm. And that is, you'll see, if you start to see consistency, that's the key. Yeah. Patterns and consistency of people coming in the numbers of 20, and they want to become involved, then I think that makes sense to start to think about a bigger venue. Number one. Yeah. I think Number it's more like it would be more like like a, a, a stock market. Yeah, but it, where it, it's, it may be like a jagged tooth for a while. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, up and down, up and down, and all of a sudden you start to see it sort of trend up. Mm -hmm. So I would trust number one. Number two is, you know, one of the one of the things we want to do with the sponsorship program is to raise enough residual funds so that if you have to step up and go into another size room where you have to pay for that, the money's there to do. The same thing with Montgomery County. You know, we want to have the funds in place. And let me just go back one for just one second. I'll make something clear that I've been sitting here pondering about the, the sponsorship program. You guys don't have to do the ask. 
per se. I'll do the ask. If you want me to do the ask, I'll do the ask. I, I know how to do that. Okay, and I'm not afraid to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those extroverted guys in the introverted circle. So what you're saying is we identify a potential sponsor, a target, and think Yeah, you, you can say they're, they're it could be something as simple as John. Say, John's uh, going to give you a call. Hey, you know, John, yeah, and say, or say, hey, you know, Jim down the street is thinking, you know, I think he'd be a good sponsor. You know, why don't we give him a call and, uh, you know, just, just ease into it, you know, that kind of a thing. I don't have a problem with doing that. So you don't have to feel like, oh, my God, how do I ask this person for money? A lot of people don't want to do that. I have no problem. What about um, uh, I, I, think maybe, I wonder if there's a gray area between reaching out for money and reaching out to say uh, um, uh, hello um, you, uh, I don't think you've met us we're the Howard County chapter of Maryland Writers Association um, you know Pleased to meet you, Mr. Councilwoman. Like there's there, the, the Howard County Council has five members on it, and they have a. I looked on on that. I forgot what it was, but they have a pretty big budget, a, a huge budget, I think. Um, I don't remember the number, but um, not not and not. <laughs> And it is so, um, but I'm not only talking about the prospect of eventually maybe getting a grant mm -hmm. from them. Right. Not not only that, but um, I wonder if um, there's a gray area where where um, we should um, try and court them. Not to maybe well introduce, introduce ourselves. Them. Yeah, um, make sure that the. The people on the local newspaper uh, would recognize us on the street. Sure. Um, you know, it actually physic physically meet people for lunch um, because it seems to me just psychologically that um, uh, somebody whose help you might need might be less likely to say, "Well, not my problem," if they've had lunch with you. I can tell you, professionally and ethically, there is no gray area there. You're absolutely, you should feel free to do that. The opportunity presents itself, or if you want to seek it out, right. it's expected. It's I, expected. Yeah. I, I guess um, by gray area, I mean the, uh, the area where you're not... Uh, Ask them for money. Yeah, you're not, ha don't have your <laughs> hand out. You're never, you're never, what you're doing you is that, right. you're, you're introducing yourself, you're getting, right. they're getting to know you. Yeah. Uh, they expect that there's a reason they're politicians. They know yeah. there's a reason you want to know them, mm -hmm. and they know what that is. Right. But they're still going to be interested, and they want to know you anyway because they want to know who's important in their communities. Yeah. They know that money's behind it ultimately, but that you're not going to. If you're a professional, you're not going to walk up to them and hit them up for money right there. That's how they can tell the amateurs from the professionals. Like so, what would what would you what do you think about the prospect of us um, introducing ourselves? to uh, Howard County Council members, five of them. You mean like in going up to a meeting? Well, I'm, I'm just, what, um, well, I, I don't know, I'm not sure what One the... One way you can start a dialogue with the council people mm -hmm. is to send monthly announcements to them. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. and then, um, because when you send a press release, mm -hmm. you send it to the media, but you're also supposed to send it to potential clients, clients, and anyone that you want to know what's happening. Mm -hmm. So if you want the council to know that you meet yeah. every month uh, and to support writers every month, then you should send them the announcements. Absolutely. You're, you're talking about uh, email? Yeah. yeah. Or optimally, optimally, an easy way to do it, when you get the whole, the background bit, mm -hmm. is you hoot them something, uh, an event that's going on, Maryland Writers Association, Howard County Chapters meeting, you hoot them that event, and, and they all have Twitter accounts. They all have Facebook accounts because that's how they're reaching out to their pop to their constituents. Mm -hmm. So you just put them on that. You put them on your 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 uh, on your Twitter list, on your hoot list, and then you hoot them at Maryland Writers Association, Howard County chapters having a meeting, such and such. And then they, that, just like Louise says, all of a sudden they start seeing that and they start wondering about perhaps what kind of constituency. I mean, they're going to look on their side of the street as Paul would say. 
Okay, what kind of constituency do these folks have? They're probably highly educated. They're educated. Writers. They're writers. They you know, know, that's interesting. <laughs> that's interesting. Why do I, I need to know more about these folks? You know, and then a lot of times in, in terms of asking for funds, I'll tell you one of the one of the, the ways you can do it is not ask for it, but ask to be pointed in the right direction. In other words, it's a very subtle way of saying, you know, well, we're trying to build our funds up. Uh, you know, I'm not, you know, where do you think we could go? Where, what what support do you have? Now we know about the Maryland State Arts Council and stuff like that. But but when you don't put them on the spot per se, mm -hmm. but you say, help me figure out what direction I should travel now, oftentimes you, you'll be amazed at the kind of support they'll give you and they'll say, you know, oh, wait, over here, you know, or what, you tell me some of the things you're doing, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. That's why um, I, got, I got, you know, wrapped around this whole teen writing thing, because to me that is such a, a, a valiant and noble effort. That you know to be associated with supporting teen writers, when you know everybody seems to be you know tweet, you know in a sense tweeting their brains away, but, but you know what I mean. It, and arts and schools are dying. What's that? Arts and schools are just dying. yeah. I mean, it's such a noble and uplifting effort. I mean, I can't imagine why people wouldn't be involved in That's something like that. Does everyone here know about the the teen writers clubs? Okay. That reminds me of um, uh, Amy's. Your pet project with the... Oh, yeah, we're collecting uh, new and gently used books for the Harry County uh, Domestic Violence Center. That's at, we at all the meetings. We should be yeah. talking about that. that that's yeah. something yeah. every chapter could do. I mean, every probably every county has at least one organization like that. Man, that that one, that's got photo op written all over it, let me tell you. I mean, really. I mean, and if you can get a council member there, at, oh. uh, you know, to hand off the books, oh, that would be nice. But I, Glenn, I actually have a contact in Ken Oldman's office That's because I met him That's at a patch break. party. Yeah. Is that a council member? No. No. no, Ken no. Oldman is the books. county executive. I oh, wow. 20 and I have, 20 I have 20 the name of his workers. chief of staff that I met at a patch party. That too, I so yes. I can pass that on to you. Yeah, please do. Um, just doing stuff like that. There's a bunch of programs set up for people. Just soldiers in a county council. I guess. I mean, it's there. Just, just have to kind of scoop it all. Because I know Courtney, whatever her last name is, is on the council. They trip all over each other trying to get to the chapters that we have in counties that have military bases would be natural. I'd like to shift that. Um, conversation is it, back is to Bethesda and Montgomery. Oh, right. <laughs> so to answer the meeting space questions, there's two things I want to really emphasize. The first is we want you to have good quality speakers. We want you to have the speakers that two months in a row bring out the hordes. That's why we want this money to be enough to pay their stipends. But also, you are all dues paying members. Everyone that's an MW admit, a member that comes to your meetings is paying dues each year. We should have meeting space available for those who show up. So go, get a better, bigger venue. You're allowed to pay for space. We planned on it. And we will adjust the allotment as needed. I mean, this was something that was started five years ago and was added two months. So yes. if we need to adjust to make room for people to come to meetings, what is more important? What's the lifeblood of the organization? It's the chapter meetings. Absolutely. Yep. It's consider, I mean, we will advocate for that at, on, for the board to get you what you need. I'll put in a good word with the treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so we just um, keep you apprised of our turnout and uh, for, to lay the groundwork for that? You're allowed to rent a space, so find a space oh. that you like, and if you need more money for it, let us know. Mm -hmm. Just tell us, you know, we want to rent a space, it costs this much, and we need this much more to meet the budget. So mm -hmm. that makes a lot of and you might want to talk to them about, with the, with the idea of sponsorships, you might want to see if you can work out a deal where we, they may cut you a deal because we want to acknowledge them for the, the use of their space. Would they be willing to consider charging less in exchange for us putting their logo on on your banners or on your on your flyers or anything? Right. In kind. In kind. Thank you. Yeah. One way to cut costs. I wonder if um, if 
th this meeting, could, you can produce some kind of writ written product somehow, some some report or something. It's I don't know how we would pull it well, together. Well, we're going to have the video. The so, video. Uh, and our secretary is taking notes and <laughs> with, an, with an idea for writing up, not not necessarily minutes, but every single word has been recorded, <laughs> including all the stuff that I really regret saying. Every single word, including the stuff about the web. <laughs> You're going to delete that part. <laughs> well, leave it legible and then put one line through. <laughs>